So as we come to the end of 2023, right around the corner is Christmas and New Year. And you know what is going to be the number one gift to give people or the number one thing that people are going to buy online when it comes to January the 1st? It's fitness trackers, fitness tech, aura rings, Fitbits, Apple Watches. And the day I talk about Apple Watches, I'm not wearing mine. <laughs> Look, I got mine on sale, bro. I got my Apple Watch on sale. So give me some slack. Cut me some slack. Cut me some slack, okay? Are they essential? Are they not? Which things work? Which things don't? Which should you count? Which shouldn't you count? So much stuff out there. First of all, let's go with my favorite, my fitness pal. <laughs> the app that counts calories, where numbers, where you can count numbers for your physique and your body on how much energy you eat and how much your body utilizes energy. Now, now I have dismissed this bullshit so many times. I have blown wide this myth of counting calories and if I go right back into it, I'm not going to get too much into it, I'm just going to touch up a little bit, just touch it a little bit today. Heating water has nothing to do with your stomach. The way your stomach operates, it's got nothing to do with heating water. We have all been ill at a time where we get the shits. We can't digest food properly. Our gut health isn't optimal. And you can eat 10,000 calories. Are you telling me if your digestion isn't working 100%, Every single thing is going to get broken down and shitted out the other end and it's going to be accounted for. Think about that. Of course it's not. Why? Because this isn't working 100%. Now, when it's only working 1%, we know about it because we're on the toilet 10 times a day. We know about it. But do you think, do you actually think out there that you guys, do you think your stomach is working 100% every single day? How do you know if it's only working 90%? How do you know if it's only working 67%? You don't, do you? When you go to the toilet and you sit down, all your shits are a little bit different depending on what kind of food you eat, which means what? The calories you've ate have not been consumed. They've not been absorbed. They've not been digested. They've not been utilized to where they need to go. They haven't been used as energy. Let's just say they know the energy in foods. Let's entertain that, okay? I don't think they do, but let's say they do. Let's entertain the fact that they know how much energy is available in a cheeseburger. Let's just say they do. And your stomach is only working 68% that day. But you don't know about the other percentage it's not working. You don't know because it's okay enough and it's not bad enough to think I have the shits. We've all been there and you know it. When you have a little bit of upset stomach throughout the day, you think, mm, I don't know, I haven't got the shits, but it's not 100%. Which means what? You only consume 68% of the burger? You only absorb 68% 80, 80, 60, of the burger? Do you only count 68% of the calories? Where does the rest go? It doesn't get absorbed, it doesn't get used as fuel. If, again, like I said, let's entertain, they know the amounts. You wake up every morning, the second you get out of bed, your basal metabolic rate changes. You walk around, your basal metabolic rate changes. Now, let me take you through another myth buster. Bodybuilders, leading up to a bodybuilding show, they're in a fat burning stage. Their body is a fat-burning furnace. They're on the fat-burning stage. Every single day, no matter what they do, they're burning fat. And they're trying to burn fat. They're doing the cardio, they're cutting the carbs, they're making sure they're having a controlled diet of whole, natural foods, no processed crap to stay lean. Then the second they hit the show, they binge. What happens the next morning? They feel full, they feel good. The day after, they feel good. They've eaten an excess of calories. Three, four thousand calories over what their body can consume. Do you think that day their body's like, oh, too many calories today, better start adding some fat. He was only supposed to have 3,000 calories and went to 3,010, we better start adding fat. Next day, it's gone to 3,020 today, we only are operating on 3,000 calories, we better store those rest calories as fat. Do you know why it doesn't happen? Because in order for your body to get into a fat storing stage, you have to program it to get there. You don't all of a sudden just come to the gym, we're not training for six months, pick up a couple of weights and all of a sudden your body's like, yep, yeah, you know that 10 kg dumbbell curl the guy just did? We better convert that to muscle. That's muscle mass today. Doesn't happen. Ask any guy out there who trains, who takes six months off, comes back, lifts some weights. It's not muscle mass, bro. Every single time you go to the gym, you tear down your muscle. Do you think it grows as muscle? No. Do you know why? Because you're not in the muscle building phase. It takes weeks, months sometimes to get into the phase of building muscle. It takes months 
four weeks, if you're on my plan, link is in the description, to get into the phase of burning fat. So there's another one why you should not use MyFitnessPal to live your life. It's garbage. Now let's move on to Fitbit. Fitbit tells you how many steps you walked. Is it really important how many steps you worked? Okay, if you are a fat piece of shit and you want to hit 10,000 on there, fair enough, go use it, follow it, it's okay. But do not count that as something, as an achievement that you've done for the day. Because you could be walking, you could be waddling around, you could be, I mean, I'm quite verbal with my hands. I move around, I talk like this, I'm like this, I'm like that, you know. If you watch my videos, you know, I watch them back as well. I, I talk with my hands. So if I had a Fitbit on, what do you think I'd say? This guy's done 10,000 steps. If you're having a little, you know, what are you going to say? I've done 10,000 steps. It's not accurate, guys. It's not accurate. Now, unless you're wearing some sort of ankle monitor, but even if he was wearing an ankle monitor, what if he did this? What if he just shuffled around a little bit? What if he was just like, you know, a bit of a nervous guy and you're moving your leg? Then what? It's going to say you count on steps? Bullshit. Distance, yes. If you want to measure distance from here to here, yeah, well, you walk that distance, fair enough. But even your phone, you can move your phone around like this and it will measure the wrong distance. They're not accurate is my point I'm trying to say. Do you want something that's accurate? Go on the treadmill, put in half an hour, walk. When the time is up, guess how long you've walked for? Half an hour. Put on the distance on the treadmill, two kilometers. When it goes zero, guess how long you've walked for on the treadmill? Two kilometers. Stop with steps, it's bullshit. It was made by the American Heart Association. Who? Anything that says America and health next to it, you know what to do with that, don't you? Wipe your ass with it. That's what you should do with that kind of information. And we move forward. We have Aura Ring. Now, Aura Ring tells you, <laughs> this is the funny one. Aura Ring tells you how optimal <laughs> your sleep has been for that night and how you should function and how, how, sorry, how you will function and how you should go about your day and the workout for the next day. You slept amazing, so today's workout is gonna be very good. Ooh, you woke up at the night over here, so take it easy on your workout today. Garbage, bro. Do you know what makes me have a good workout? When I've had the shittest night's sleep. I've had the worst sleep, I've had zero sleep, I get up in the morning, I'm so pissed off that I had such a bad sleep. I haven't had breakfast. I'm really pissed off I've missed my breakfast, even though I don't eat breakfast. I come to the gym and I kill it and I have the best, baddest workout. Why? Because I'm like this with my mindset. I'm like, I am pissed off with myself today. I'm going to go and kill it in the gym. No ring is going to tell me, yo, bro, take it easy today. No, you tell me to take it easy, G. You could have... 10 hours of rest, beautiful sleep, and the ring says, go there, kill it today. You've had some rest, you go to the gym, you've done your cardio, you've had your breakfast, you go to the gym, you're ready for it, yeah. On the program today, it says 265 on the deadlifts. You start warming up, you load up 100, you load up 140, and you think, no, 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 today, something's off. Ain't feeling good today. So guess what you do? You be smart, unless it was 10 years ago. But you be smart, you live to fight another day. You don't let a ring dictate and tell you how well you snapped. You can have an event on the next morning, whatever it is, I don't know. It could be your wedding day, whatever. Something you've been looking forward to. You're meeting a loved one or whatever it is. You're not sleeping that night. You're excited. You're like, I can't wait to get out of bed. You sleep three, four hours and guess what? The next day you have a bag of energy, a ton of energy to go out and kill it. Whatever you need to do that day. Comes from where? Where does it come from? It comes from here and it comes from here. Not, not your ring, not your aura ring. Fitness trackers. Bullshit. I don't know how many of the trackers there are out there. There's a Garmin watch. I used to have a Garmin watch. You know what I use? Oh yeah, let me just tell you one thing. If people ask me, yeah, Faddy, you've got a, you know, Fitbit watch or whatever you call it. Apple watch. I've got an Apple watch. Now my Apple watch is for my heart rate only. That's it. How accurate is it on my wrist? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't even think it's that accurate, but it works. It tells me a decent average of where my heart rate is. So when I'm on TRT, especially right now, I'm on MK677. My blood pressure is not elevated, but it's gone from like 120 to 130. I know. Obviously, my resting heart rate is a little bit higher than normal. But I know what I'm doing. I know why it is. But let's say you didn't know. You was getting out of breath and 
you're going about your business and you think, I don't know, there's something up with me. And you know, you're one of those guys that don't, you know, regularly do blood work or you don't check your blood pressure, you don't check your pulse or that kind of stuff. And you wear one of these watches and every day your resting heart rate is above 100. You're thinking, oh shit, you know what? Maybe there's a little bit of an issue here. That's the only time I would say having one of those watches is crucial because... I know people would go, well, you could just check your pulse. Well, you could, but when you check your pulse, you're going to be seated, you're going to be relaxing, you're going to be like, right, let me check my pulse. It's not an average of the whole day. So those watches are good. They're okay for that one purpose only. You can get a Polar watch or a Garmin watch, whichever watch you want with the back, you know, heart rate monitor on it. That is the only thing I would use the fitness tracker for. Nothing else. Of course, blood pressure. Now, when you have a blood pressure monitor at home, you can fill it in on your app over here. I don't even know what the app's called because I don't really use it a lot. I just make a note of it in my diary. I don't have a diary, but like in my notebook. But there's an app on here somewhere. I'm trying to look for it. It has a love heart on it. This one, yeah, health. I don't know if you guys can see that. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, a health, it's a health app. So you click on there, you put in your, uh, your blood pressure. So like the other, the other week, my blood pressure was 127 over 74. I now know that. I know that. So I'll put it in again today and tomorrow, the day after. And then I have a good history of what my heart rate was at, you know? So I think for that reason, it's okay. It also tells me distance, walk. I don't really give a shit, bro. Heart rate, what my average heart rate was, you know, 75. Yeah, it's good to know. Those things are okay to know. But don't get lost in the numbers, guys. Yes, when it comes to blood work, you should look at blood work. It's a good indication of, hang on, or do we have high hematocrit? Is our testosterone low? Is our estrogen high? Is our LDL out of whack? Is our HDL going crazy? Blood work, yes, absolutely. But fitness trackers, something like this on your phone or something you wear on your wrist or something you put on your chest, absolute garbage. Christmas is coming, guys. Buy a box of Ferrero Rocher's or some lint chocolate. Enjoy yourself. Don't waste your money on fitness trackers and all these other bullshit apps. But if the Apple Watch is on sale, buy it because I think it's a decent bit of kit. Bit of kit. And also, for me, when I'm, when I'm training, it's good to just press talk. So if I'm, when I, while I'm training, it's good to chat to someone while I'm training. Uh, other than that, all the other stuff, bullshit. It's garbage. Don't count calories. Comment down below, like, and please subscribe.